Here we are. We got both owners, hey, Dan. co-owners, Jim McClure and Sigmund Schreer. How you doing, Dan? My pleasure, sir. Having a great time just walking through a sea of blue jeans. <laughs> Seriously, 100,000 pairs of jeans? 100,000 pairs. That's crazy. I mean, you must have every fit completely anybody could possibly need. We try to fit them from small to large, big to tall, to small to tall. Absolutely. So, 100,000 pairs of jeans and about every kind of brand there is out there. And you know, it's interesting for me, I wore jeans all through school, you know, I mean, we all did. And now I, I still wear them, you know, and I'll always wear them. So it's one of those pants that just like, doesn't seem to ever go away. It's not gonna go away. It's just part of our heritage, wearing blue jeans. And it started in America, right? Did yeah, absolutely. The, the very original jean, Dan, was the Levi 501. It was invented in 1873 by Levi Strauss. Levi was a Bavarian immigrant that came to the United States in the mid 1800s. And when the California Gold Rush started, he went to California with the intention of manufacturing tents for the miners. But when he got there and talked to the miners, what he was told is that we need a trouser, which is what they called them back then, that'll hold up in the kind of conditions that we're working. And traditional fabrics just wouldn't do that. So Levi ordered a serge fabric from Nimes, France. It's manufactured in Nimes, France. And so it broke in English, you would order serge de Nimes. And that's where the word denim comes from when you say de Nimes. From France. From France, as it, the word became Americanized, it evolved into denim. <laughs> so and that was 1873. This jean was butt to fly, and it still is today. Um, the reason it was a button fly is that the zipper wasn't invented until 1917, and really wasn't used in clothes until 1937. So button fly was just the, the nature of the of anything in trousers. And also. that still that same pant that was made then right. is the same pant that's being made now. That's right. It's virtually the same pant today. This is the one that you got to you got to wash it and shrink it to your fit. Right, right. It's got rivets on the pockets. Levi Strauss uh, owned half the patent on that. And then this is their famous trademark. The old logo with the two horses. Trying uh, trying to pull a pair of pants apart. A pair of jeans apart and they couldn't do it. And you can't do it. So, I love it. Yeah. But yet for a product that lasts 140 years is pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah that's longer than Coca-Cola, I think. Yeah, <laughs> could be. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're going to get into how many boots you have in just a minute, and I'm going to ask you a little bit more about the story of Drysdale's and how the whole thing got started and how the name came about, which from what I understand isn't really from Drysdale's, it's from Dry, and we want to hear a little bit about more about that story here in just a few minutes. Okay. We're on the road with Noble Outfitters, and I have just seen an inventory of 100,000 pairs of blue jeans, and I just got the whole denim story about how denim even got its name from Jim McClure here, co-owner of Drysdale's Western Wear in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I can tell you, they have every size you could possibly need. They have got this size and they have this size. Perfect. So Jim, also you guys have a tremendous amount of footwear and Western boots. And I want you to tell me a little bit about the Western boot inventory. Well, we stock about 45,000 pair of boots, Dan. We have a, a very large men's Western boot area here. We have... Now, I didn't misunderstand you. How many boots? 40, about 45,000. 45,000 right. pairs of boots. Right. It's, I always say this is the largest boot department in the world, and no one has ever argued with me on that. <laughs> but we have a, a big men's Western boot department, we have women's Western boot department, and then we have work boot department. Which, steel toe, soft toe, every kind of work boot that anybody could want. Uh, that's a big category for us as well. Tell me a little bit about your philosophy here. Your, your customers just feel so comfortable here. I, I see the people walking around and spend time in the store, the way your employees take care of the customers. Tell us about the story behind Drysdale's, the story behind customer service and retailing, the way you've learned it. Well, we consider ourselves a, des a destination shopping uh, store. Uh, people will drive 100 to 200 miles to, to come here because they know when they get here, they're going to see the best selection of boots anywhere in the state or the Midwest. They're going to see the best selection of denim jeans anywhere in the state or the Midwest. So, and they know if they want two or three pair of jeans in one size, we're, we're going to have that as well. So we're, we're a destination store. We're fortunate. We have a lot of good customers and we get a lot of tourists. That people come to Oklahoma, they want to see a Western store and uh, we're grateful for that customer. Tell well. me a little bit about the story. Drysdale's, because I understand 
Drysdale's came from Mr. Dry, right. not from Mr. Drysdale's, but Mr. Dry, and you actually knew Mr. Dry. Yeah, the four of us, plus Mr. Dry that started this company in 1981, worked for Mr. Dry at a company called Shepler's in Wichita back in the early 70s. He sold that company in 1976 and retired. Uh, he moved to Hot Springs, Arkansas and started a racehorse business. And they called, uh, he and his wife called that farm Drysdale's. And so when we, five years later, he said he wanted to come out of retirement. He was 72 years old. And uh, we, we said, we'd, we'd like to if you want to. And so uh, he, he's really our mentor and he's the one that gave us the secret. So when you were young, you were working at Shepler's for Mr. Dry. Right. And how old were you when you started in retail? Well, I was 16 when I started. I was in college when I worked at Shepler's for Mr. Dry in Wichita, 30 when we opened here. So, so he, was, he was definitely your mentor. Yeah, absolutely. Of how to work a retail store. Yeah, and people would say to him, Mr. Dry, how are you so successful? What's your secret to success? And he would say, I'll tell you, it's no secret. It's just hard work, yeah. plain and simple. And he had grown up in the Depression, and uh, men that came out of that era uh, like nothing better than to get up in the morning, put on a coat and tie, and go to work. Well, you know, anybody that came out of the Depression, came out of the Dust Bowl, which was this area, right. you know, they have got a certain sense of work ethic that we'll never, we'll never see again in this country. We've become soft, really, after that. I mean, those, those folks know what it was to actually do without and be without and scrape and scrimp and get along. Absolutely. And uh, they're great mentors because those folks really can give you a great idea of how to take care of a customer. When a customer needs something, you, you don't say anything except now, you know, right. you're on it. You go get it because you, you appreciate that customer. Well, it's great that you were able to get that mentorship from somebody that was an expert retailer mm -hmm. and carry it through until now and, and, and here's where we are today. It's, it's, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have had that experience and it's worked out well for, for all of us here. Well, I'd like to look at the rest of the store. I know you've got a couple of other people that man a couple of the other departments in the We'd store. Like to show you. So yeah. I think I'm going to meet Leanne next okay. and she's going to show me around the women's department. Let's go meet her. Yes, sir. Thank you for your hospitality. Yeah, I really appreciate Our it. Our pleasure. We're on the road with Noble Outfitters. Next up, we're going to meet Leanne and go through the women's department.